today's exercise is, I think, a bit of a tough one, and I really want you to give it a shot on your own. Let me explain what it does, and I'll give you a shot to go and do it on your own. The end code is not actually all that complicated. I found that it was a little bit tough for me to, to come around to this idea at first, though. So here's how it works. You click a checkbox, you hold down your shift key, you click another one, and all the checkboxes in between the first one and the second one that you clicked will then be checked. This works top to bottom, but also bottom to top. So if I click on this one, hold down shift, click on here, it's going to go bottom to top. So it goes all ways, depending on what you're working on, you can go either way. And this is a fairly common thing that you're going to see in applications such as Gmail, where you want to select a whole bunch of emails and delete them at once. Let's take a quick look at our, at our HTML here. We've got our input with the type of checkbox and a paragraph tag, probably a, a label would be more suited for something like that, but whatever, we're working with it. Then we've got a script tag here. And, and by the way, if you're wondering why I always indent my script tags so far to the left, it's just because I need the, the horizontal space. If it bugs you, I'm sorry, but I need to make sure my code fits on the screen. Now, give it a shot yourself and I'll see you back here. Hopefully triumphant, maybe not, and we'll go through it together. So here we go. Well, first thing we need to do is select every single one of the checkboxes because we need to listen for when they get checked. So we'll say const checkboxes equals document dot query selector all. And we want to grab dot inbox. And we want to grab the inputs that have a type of checkbox. And probably pop an input on there as well. Good. Let's just double check that we got all those checkboxes. Query selector all. You have to spell it right. Query selector all. There we go. Input, input, input. Okay, good. I've got all of the inputs that I'm working with here. Now we need to listen for when one of them gets clicked or changed. So we will take the checkboxes and we will loop over each one. Checkbox. And on that, we are going to take the checkbox and add event listener, we are going to listen for a click. I initially thought that you could had to listen for the change event, but apparently the click event will fire even if you use your keyboard, which is really handy to know. Um, we've got our add event listener. And when someone clicks it, we are going to run a function called handle check. Now let's go up here and make that function. That will have us event and we'll just console log the event. Click. All right. Click, click, click. We're getting the information for every single one. Now, this is where the hard part starts to happen, where we need to log. When I check my first one, we need to put that into a variable because when we check your second one or and you're holding down shift, we need to know what that last one was. So we're going to make a variable up here called let last checked. and the reason why I'm using let is because that's going to be reassigned constantly. And then inside of here, sort of the last thing that we're going to do is we'll say last checked equals this. That's like the last thing we're going to do, but we'll we'll put it on there. So now when I click one and we type in last checked, we have a reference to the input that was last checked. Now up here, first, a couple of things we need to do. We need to check if they had the shift key down. So we'll say if e dot shift key. And if the event dot shift key is there, that means they were holding it down. And then we'll go ahead and write our code. However, the other thing we need to do is when I uncheck, it will also trigger handle check. So we need to make sure that check if they had a shift key down and check that they are checking it. So not unchecking it, right? Because you don't care if they're unchecking it. You want to check if they're unchecking. Okay, let's stop saying the word checked. Let's got it. And this dot checked. I just said we would stop saying it. So if the shift key is down and they are checking the box, then we can go ahead and do what we please. And inside of here, now, this is where our sausage gets made. What we are going to do here is we are going to loop through every single checkbox. Every time this happens, 
We're going to loop over every single checkbox. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for the first one that was checked. And then I check down here. What's going to happen is we're going to say, oh, you're not. You're not the first one. Oh, you are the first one. OK, good. Then go to the next one. Check it. Next one. Check it. Next one. Check it. This one. Oh, you're the last one that's checked. Stop it. And then these two will won't be checked. So rather than try and figure out where in the DOM they are and trying to figure out like which elements are in between it and following finding parents. And I find that's really, really fragile a way to do it because you're depending on having the HTML set just so. And then if someone else comes along and changes the HTML a little bit, it will just break. So we are going to loop over every single checkbox. We're going to create a variable called in between. And what in between will do is we'll loop over this one. I'll say in between false. We'll loop over this one in between false. We'll loop over this one. And it's going to say, OK, this is where we started. We are now in the area which we wish to check. So we'll check it, check it, check it, check it. Because the in between variable is going to be set to true when we're here. And then when we hit our last one, we're going to say in between is false because we're done and we're no longer going to check any others. So this will probably take a couple of readovers, but let's get it. So we will go up here before we do the if statement. We'll say let in between equals capital B on the in between false. So we're not in between. And then here we are going to loop over every single check box. So say check boxes dot for each checkbox. And let's just console log checkbox, see where we're at. So if I click one, nothing because and now I'm going to hold down my shift key and click another one. OK, so when that happened, I get every single checkbox along the way. Now we need to figure out as we are looping for this, we got to set this in between variable to true. And the way that we're going to do that is we say if checkbox is equal to this or checkbox is equal to last checked, then in between is we normally would say in between is equal to true, but since we want it to go both ways, we set in between to the opposite of itself. What? OK, let's let's go through this one sec. If the checkbox is equal to this. So here we go. Check it. And let me do it backwards this way so we can understand it. So I check this one. I hold down shift and I click on check one item. And what's going to happen is we're going to go through this one. It's going to say, is that in between? No, it's going to go through this one and say, is the checkbox equal to this? And what is this? This is going to be the one that got checked. And that's the checkbox. This one is going to be equal to the same one that we are currently looping over. So that's going to be true. So we're going to we're going to turn on that in between variable. And then the other way around it is if we go this way, last checked, and then we go down to good luck and click it again, it's going to still go from top to bottom. But it's going to say if the checkbox is the last checked one, meaning that we, this is the currently checked one, but check one item is the last check one. So I feel like I'm saying checked a lot, but we got this. We got this. So in between. So uh, we could console log starting to check them in between. So check there, check there. And what happens is here we go. One, we get to this one and it says, OK, good. Now we're starting, starting to check them in between and down down, 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 and then down. And then once we hit this one, that's the last one that we checked. So it, it console logs it again. That means we're finished, which is why we do this opposite thing. So if it's true, it's it's false. If it's false, it's true. And then we hit these last two, which aren't going to be. So we can say down here, we have another if statement. That is if in between capital B, then checkbox dot checked equals true. Uh, check it. 
hold on shift, check another one. Bam, nailed it. Okay, let's see what's going on there. We set a flag variable called in between that is set to false. Once we hit that first one, it's going to be true, which is going to check if it's on, and then we're going to programmatically set it to checked with JavaScript. And we're going to do that for every single one until we hit that last one, which our flag variable called in between gets set to false and it will no longer run it for these first two or for these last two. And that works both ways from bottom to top because we did this little ditty right here where we checked if it's equal to this, which is the one we clicked, or if it's the one that we last checked. So that's it. It's actually fairly simple now that we have it. It's not a lot of code. It's just a little bit hard to understand uh, what's going on. So maybe go through that a couple more times, code it yourself from scratch so you totally understand it. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of that one. See you tomorrow.